Now that we've learned how to add and subtract polynomials, the next thing we're going to do is multiply them. Um, fortunately, we will not get to division until much later in the year because we have to do a lot of things in between before we can start dividing polynomials. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to multiply a monomial to a polynomial. You should be able to multiply two binomials, and then you should be able to multiply a binomial and a trinomial together. Remember, these are vocab words from before. Remember, this means one and this means many. Two binomials means two things with two, so it'll look something like this. And a binomial and a trinomial, so you have a two and a three. So I know you guys don't have this slide, but I thought it'd be good to bring up. Basically, anytime you multiply polynomials, you are just using the distributive property. So back in the day when we first learned this, we would draw the little arrows, and I'm going to keep doing that today, and you'd take A times B, and then you would add A times C. We're going to do exactly the same thing here, except we're going to have polynomials. So we do have to remember our exponent rules, because you're going to get something like this, where you need to take this 4B and multiply it by 5B squared. And we know we can multiply the numbers together to get 20. And then remember, we can add the exponents. We end up with b cubed. And we're going to do the same thing and multiply 4b times b. So 4b times b. There's no numbers to multiply together, so we have 4b. And then b times b, we add the exponents, so we get b squared. Do the same thing with the last one. 4b gets multiplied by 6. 4b times 6. So we just have numbers to multiply together this time, so it gives us 24b. Now, you are going to get to the point where you do not need this in between here, and you can just draw your arrows and distribute. So I'm going to try one like that and see if it makes sense for you. So negative 7h times 3h squared. You multiply the numbers together, negative 21. h to the first power times h to the second power is h cubed. Do the same thing, negative 7h times negative 8h. You multiply your numbers together, gives you 56, positive 56, that's why there's the plus there. h to the first times h to the first gives us h squared. And then the last one, negative 7h times negative 1, you multiply the numbers together, and then we only have 1h, and that's it. I'll save this problem for you. So that was the first task. Next one is we need to multiply two binomials together. And if you look up here, this tells you what we're going to be doing. We're going to double distribute. So before, when we just had one thing out in front, we only had one thing to multiply by all of our terms on the inside. This time, you can think about it as I need to multiply this guy by both things in these parentheses and then this guy by both of those things in parentheses. So we're going to double distribute. So let's draw these arrows as we go so it's a little less confusing. So I need to distribute the 6h. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply it by 2h. It'll give me 12h squared. And then I have to do 6h times 3. So that gives me 18h. Now once I've distributed the 6h to everything, I can move on to the negative 7. And this needs to be distributed to both of these things also. So this gives me negative 14h and then minus 21. Now the reason we do adding and subtracting before we can do multiplication is because you're going to get to something like this and you need to make sure that you, can, that you can't simplify anymore. So in this case, we have these like terms right here that we can combine. So I have 12h squared minus 4h, or plus 4h, sorry, minus 21. And this right here is the product of those two binomials multiplied together. Let's try c together. So remember, we have to double distribute. So I'm going to take the 9a and multiply it by 7a. So you multiply your numbers. You add your exponents, and then do 9a times 4. Multiply your numbers, add your exponents. Now the next one I have to do is I have to multiply negative 8. So negative 8 times 7a gives me negative 56a. 
And then negative 8 times 4 gives me negative 32. Make sure you combine your like terms before you leave the problem. So these two things right here both have just one a with them. So 63a squared, if we subtract these, we get negative 20a minus 32. And that's it. So the last type we have to do is multiplying a binomial times a trinomial. So the steps are exactly the same, except this time I need to distribute this to three things instead of just two. So we'll do x times x squared. Remember, add your exponents so we get x cubed. x times negative 4x gives me negative 4x squared. And then x times 1 gives me x. Now I gotta do the same thing with the 9. Multiply this times x squared. Multiply 9 times negative 4x, which gives me negative 36x. And then 9 times 1, which gives me 9. And before we box this up, combine your like terms. So x cubed doesn't have anybody to combine with. I have negative 4x squared and 9x squared, so that'll give me 5x squared. With my plain old x's, I have one of them here and a minus 36 of them, so we'll have negative 35. And then 9 doesn't have anybody to hook up with either, so we'll just throw them on the end. And this is the product of those two polynomials. And that's really it. There's no more to this lesson. Besides, there's some things that look kind of weird, so we should talk about them. These are our special cases. Now, if I give you something like this, t plus 6 in parentheses all squared, remember what this means. If I give you x squared, it really means that I have x times x. If I give you 3 squared, it means 3 times 3. So if I give you all this junk inside of parentheses and tell you that it's squared, it means that you have t plus 6 times t plus 6 every single time. So when you see something like this, I know it's very tempting to like distribute it. Remember, the only time we do that is if there's things being multiplied on the inside. But the second there's addition and subtraction, I want you to rewrite it twice. And then it becomes just like all the other problems we did, where you just have to double distribute. So let's do, let's do b together since that's a little more interesting. 5y times 5y gives me 25y squared. 5y times 1 gives me 5y. And then distribute the 1 here, so I get another 5y, and I get 1. Combine our like terms in the middle, and this is what we get. Now there's a rule that goes along with this, and if we skip this next slide and go right here, this is the rule. So you can memorize this rule if you want to. To be honest, I don't memorize this rule. I just double distribute. But it says anytime you have something like the problem we just did, your first term is this term squared, your last term is this term squared, and the stuff in the middle is 2 times a times b. So if we go back to this slide, 5y squared would be right here because that's your first term. This is 1 squared. And then this is 2 times 5y times 1, which it's definitely the case. But for me, it's just easier to double distribute and not memorize something. But if you would like to memorize the rule, go right ahead. The rule would tell us that this one right here would be t squared here, 6 squared here, and then 2 times t times 6. So you'd end up with t squared plus 12t plus 36, which is exactly what you're going to get if you double distribute this. It's all up to however you want to think about it. So you're going to try this one on your own. Either use the rule or write it twice and double distribute. The other weird one we got to talk about is ones that look like this. So if you look, this is d plus 11 and d minus 11. Exactly the same thing, except different signs. Same thing with this. One's plus, one's minus, one's plus, one's minus. So something pretty awesome happens here when we go and distribute these. d times d gives me d squared. 
D times negative 11 gives me negative 11D. Now we gotta distribute the positive 11. So we get positive 11D and then negative 121. If you notice, when we go to combine our like terms, these cross off and I'm just left with D squared minus 121. And that's the other rule. These things are called the difference of squares where you have the same thing, but one's plus, one's minus, every single time your middle terms are gonna cancel. So if we go back and try this one with the rule, the rule says I take this guy and square it, so c to the fourth, and I take this guy and square it, so 64, and throw a negative sign in between. Now this rule I do memorize because it is less work than doing c squared times c squared, c squared times negative eight, oops, square, eight times c squared, and then eight times negative eight. I know those cancel in the middle, so I just square them both. So I'm leaving this one for you to do. You can either use the rule or double distribute and make sure your middle terms cross off. But those are the three things that you need to know how to do. Monomial times a binomial, two binomials, and a binomial times a trinomial. There's some weird things in here with these that you should know, but other than that, that's it. Make sure you write down any questions you have and we can go over them in class. Enjoy your night.